Hi guys, uh, my name is MD Shahjada Imran. Uh, today I will make a video about ODBC connection uh, on uh, Microsoft Access and UFT. So the language is um, VB scripting. That is the language I will be using to do the ODBC connection. And the tool is HP QTP or Microfocus UFT and ODBC means Open Database Connectivity. So the main topic is uh, ODBC connection with Microsoft Access in UFT. So I I have written this Word document. Here I can see there is a precondition. The precondition is I have to have ready MS Access Database with a table which includes few rows and columns with data. So I have that ready. So under uh, C drive under automation folder I have one uh, database called my database underscore microsoft access if i double click it opens up this is the table my table name this is the table name so if i double click uh, the table shows this in this table i can see there are three columns this is one column uh, with the column header id there is another column with the column header key underscore word there is another column with the column header item and it has total nine rows from one to nine so three column and nine rows and one column header in the uh, database table and the table name is this one my table name so that is the precondition so i need to have that i will i have that so i have showed that And the second thing is create data source name DSN in ODBC. For that, for the second step, I have to open control panel. So I will type control panel. Control panel here. Double click. And I will be clicking on administrative tools double click and it says uh, ODBC data source ODBC so I'll double click here so there are a few um, DSN previously created so I will create a new one so I'll click on add and I will be choosing uh, there are so many that we can see for Excel, Access, and for Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, uh, MongoDB. So all, all those databases mm, available. So we can uh, create a data source uh, for any database. For now, I will be using uh, Microsoft Access. So I have to choose this one, ACCDMB. I close this one if I go to that folder right click properties it says the type is a C C D V so that is what I have to choose so I have chosen this one and I will click on finish and then I have to give a name I I will be giving name data source name underscore Imran I just give a name now I have to select the database so I'll be clicking on select clicking on C under automation the second one it says um, second one here you can see my database underscore microsoft underscore access sccdb 
so I have selected this one I will click on OK and then I will click on OK and this is showing up here uh, my DSN underscore name so that is the first step that I have showed hands on I'll cl click on here to close it click on here to close it and also click here to close the control panel now this is the second first step for ODBC connection um, that I have showed hands on so I'll be clicking on here and here so that I can claim that I have showed hands on now I will be writing UFT script using web based scripting so I open UFT I will click on a file click on new I'll click on uh, test uh, and GUI test I'll be choosing from here and I'll click on uh, the test name is this one so I'll be clicking on uh, create so the version of the UFT is 12.53 uh, UFT is creating the MT script it's creating it's just creating now I'll be clicking on action so you can see the editor where I can do the scripting so the first is create parameters for ODBC connection so I need to have two parameters one is connection string other one is SQL query so that is what I will be first is connection string so the C CS connect, connection string equal to connect, connection string varies based on the database type if it is Oracle the database connection string will be another one if it is access if it is SQL server it is MySQL it is, if it is MongoDB based on the database type the connection string will be different and in the connection string the number of um, input arguments will be also different for for now for microsoft access for this particular scenario uh, there will be one connection string that is uh, data source name equal to and the name i have to collect the name i just created this one my dsn underscore name so i'll be copying the name from here copy okay so i put here so i just created one uh, parameter that is for the connection string and the second one is i need sql query sql or sql query the sql query i want to bring well so let me open the table again I clicked on the, the automation so um, it so this is the table my table name this is the table and I want to bring everything from his from this table so the SQL query would be select a star from the table name because I want to bring everything from here select star from the table name it is the table name I close the table right click here I will say rename so that it becomes uh, copyable now I can copy it I clicked copy it now I will be pasting here here so I just uh, created the second parameter so for ODBC connection I need uh, two parameters one is connection string this is the one 
and second one is the SQL query. So I can mark this line as done, showing, done, showing, hands on, this line is done. Now the second one, a create connection object and record seal object. connecting into database set con equal to create object create object first bracket double code add your db dot connection So I have created the object called con for the connection. Now I will connect con dot. I will choose open from here, and I will give the connection a string. Connection string is this one. Paste here. So I have connected to the database. Now I will be creating a record set object. So there are two objects that I have mentioned here. One is a connection object, other one is record set object. So now I will create the record set object. the record set object so I will say set record set equal to create object ATO DB dot record set ATO DB dot record set Now I will open it. So record set dot. This object has a set of uh, methods and properties. This is a set of methods and properties which are available for this particular object. So now I will be using the uh, met using open. open. SQL, SQL, comma, con, SQL, comma, con. So, once this line, line number 10 executes, it will create a record set object. And that record set object is invisible object. We don't have a visual to this, to that record set object. For uh, access, Microsoft Access, I can open it. If I, I can see the object, I can see the file here. If I click, I can see the table here. If I click, I can see all the rows and columns and the column headers in the table in Microsoft Access. So I have a visual here. But for the record set object, and we don't have a visual we cannot see it we can just imagine it so once the line number 10 executes um, it will create a record set object in the background which will look like something similar this is the record set object it has uh, it will look like similar to this the record set object once the line number 10 executes it will create a one record set object in the background which is invisible object and that record set has uh, will have three columns the first column number is zero second column number is one third column number is two and that 
has uh, rows uh, from 1 to 9 and the column header this is the column header row for the column header and then 9 rows for the data so this is how the record set object will look like now I have uh, shown this step also how to create the record set object and how to create the connection object hands on so my this now I will find out how many row uh, find out how many rows are in the record set so if I manually go to the object how many rows here one two these are rows one two three four five six seven eight nine total nine rows in the record set object so that what i have to, this is i just uh, in my i this uh, record set object i have created based on the imagination this object is invisible object we will not have a visual to this object so this object has nine rows so now I will be finding uh, how, how we can find out the row counts. By default, when the line number 10 executes, when the li uh, line number 10 executes, it's create this record set object and the first row is selected. I have selected the first row. You see the color has been changed. It's light uh, blue and the, all the other rows color is white and this row's color is light blue because this row is selected i just selected manually so when the record said when when this line executes line number 10 executes it creates something exactly similar and the first row is selected by default okay row equal to zero i just imagined row equal to zero now I will use a for loop uh, not for loop do while loop I'll be using a do while loop so do loop while record set not record set, record set end of file end of file so So what this, uh, this uh, one, two, three, four, five, five lines of code, what this five lines of code will do, find out the row count. Now on for line number four, I have mentioned the row count is zero and I, I give a do loop while condition. And I said if the record set is not end, if it, if the end of file is not then do this so in first iteration this row is selected the first iteration this row is selected and it will check is this the last line of this uh, object no there are more lines here so row count gets one at the end when the first iteration row count gets one then since this is not the last line of this object so in the second iteration it will select the second row 
how I said the uh, record said move next so it will go to the next record once this line executes this record gets selected now when it comes out and then in this line it checks uh, if it is if if that is the last line of the object or not no because there are more lines here then in the third iteration when the third iteration goes uh, through the loop the row counts become three row counts become three and uh, row counts become three here and then move to the next row and it continuously do until until it gets gets to the last line now if i run it If I run it, it should show the row count. Row count is nine. Click on OK. So I can mark this one that I have showed hands on and click on OK. Now I will show the next step that is uh, find out column count of the record set object. The column has uh, three, one, two, three. Column number is zero. The first column number is zero. Second column number is one. Third column's number is two. But there are total three columns. So I will be finding out now how many columns are in the record set object. commented out this one and I ran it to see the column count it should show 3 because there are total 3 yes column count is 3 ok I have showed this one hands on Now I will move data from record set object into the runtime data table.
this uh, there are two uh, data table has uh, two sheet global and local local sheets name is action one and this is the global sheet in the uh, data table and the runtime data table reflects the data during the runtime so the data I will be transferring from this object record set object to the runtime data table the runtime data table object into random data table so data will be moved um, from this uh, record set object to the runtime data table so there uh, data table there are two types of data table design time data table and runtime data table this is a design time data table the data table that we can see during scripting now I am scripting so the data table I am seeing that is design time data table if I click on run and the script is running during that run time the data table will be here that will be the runtime data table so now the data I am moving from this um, record set object to the runtime data table and I will be moving to the action action one uh, so this is local data table uh, this data table has two sheet global sheet and local sheet so I will be moving to the local sheet which name is action one so this first I have to activate the column this this column headers a b c d these are not actual column headers so I have to activate these columns so I have to add the columns that is the first thing I have to do so I will be running I will be using a for loop because there are three columns there are three columns so I want to add ID I want to add key underscore word and I want to add item these three values here 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 and here if I manually do I will double click I will say ID if I click on OK, so that's how it will look like. Right, right now it is showing in the design time data table. So I will be deleting this one. Now I will add true scripting. So I will use for loop for k equal to one two column. So there will be column count is here three so a script will uh, this for loop for loop will iterate three times with the k value one k value two and k value three and every iteration it will add uh, in the first iteration it will add id here the second iteration it will add um, the second uh, column header which is key underscore word in the third iteration it will add the item column here item column here so and I have to use a utility object called data table data table dot local sheet local sheet this sheet action one is called local sheet dot uh, add parameter and the parameter value I have to add from the record set object record set dot fill k dot uh, name and comma dummy dummy value so it will 
add three columns here and um, the way this uh, method works that I have to give the column header name which I will be bringing through this uh, code and also I have to give whatever uh, the first rows value now if I comment it out and run it I should see those uh, here also in the run result uh, run result viewer so I'll be running it It says uh, item cannot be found in the collection corresponding to the okay uh, actually column it would be column count is zero one two so the iteration should uh, starts with zero and one and two not one two and three the way i wrote the code it says it starts with one and ends with the count count is three so it starts with uh, one ends with uh, three but that is not right it should be it starts with zero and ends with two zero uh, three minus one that's two because when i am giving the value here I have to give zero in the first iteration to access this column to access this one I have to give this value zero the second iteration I have to give this value one and the third iteration I have to give this value so now I run it if I go here so this is the runtime directable that I can see in the run result viewer this is called run result viewer it used to call test test fusion report when the tool name was QTP but now the tool name is UFT so the name of this uh, reports name also got changed so in this uh, report we can see the runtime directables action one has this three column and also the first row value dummy values so I have added the column headers here now I have to add the values all the values it has a nine row I just added this one and this rows also but with the different value with dummy 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 but now I have to write code which will add all these uh, nine rows So I will write the for loops now. I equal to one two row so it will um, this for loop will iterate nine times one two nine the row value is nine we found here when this uh, 17 exits when this script uh, exits from executing the line 17 on the 18th we found uh, row count is 9 and here I say iterates through 9 time it starts with 1 ends with 9 so it, this for loop will iterate 9 times in the first iteration in the first iteration uh, before before uh, since uh, Currently, this row is selected. Row number nine is selected. 
currently uh, when I run this uh, while loop the record set got moved 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 to the last record and then exit from the loop so currently this uh, record is selected you see the color uh, light uh, blue and all the other uh, records color is white so this row is selected now I have to select the first row so before I start the fall loop I will be writing record set dot move first move first so line number when this line executes the record set objects first row will be selected so it's moved to the first row move first move to the first row now I will be running the for loop the for loop will iterate nine times in the first iteration the i value is one now the record sets first record is selected also I have I have the data um, data table the data tables first row has to be selected I, right now I manually selected the first row therefore the color got changed it's black all the remaining uh, rows color is white that means those colors on those rows are not selected the first row is selected that's why the color is um, black so now I have to select this first row through this scripting so I will be using the data table utility object data table dot local sheet local sheet dot set current row set current row I will be giving the i value here i so when the first iterate iteration uh, runs i value will be 1 and the first row will be selected when the second iteration runs the i, I value will be 2 and the second row will be selected from here when third iteration runs when the third iteration runs here the i value will be 3 and the third row will be selected so initially when the first iteration runs i value is 1 and the first row selected now since the first row selected i have to enter these three values there are three columns so i have to enter these three values so i have to, I have to write another for loop to enter these values the first for loop will iterate through the rows from row 1 to row 9 and the second for loop will iterate through column 1 to column 3 so i need i need to have another for loop for j equal to here i have to write 0 to column count call minus 1 why i have to write 0 because the object uh, starts with 0 the record said invisible object that starts with 0 this this object the third one data table is visible i can see here data table is visible but the record set object is invisible now it will iterate through three times zero to one zero to two the first iteration in 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 this for loop this will iterate three times in the first iteration it will enter value here and the second iteration it will enter value here and the third iteration it will enter value here so i need to use the assignment of assign i have to assign the value from the object run uh, from the from this object record set object to the data table so the data table will be first and the value will be second in the equal sign this is the equal sign in the left sign where i am putting the data and in the right side from where i will be bringing the data that is the assignment 
now I will do the variable assignment in this line and in the left side I will put where the data will be entered so I have to refer this cell in this field and this field is a data, uh, data table field so I have to write here data data table dot data table first bracket um, and then column the first column is one in the data table first column the count is one second column count is two but in the record said first column count is zero that is the difference uh, the record sets first columns count is zero but the data tables first columns count is one so I have to put one here how we will be putting one here j plus one so j in the first iteration j's value is zero plus one zero plus one equal to one so enter value becomes one that refers this column comma now i also have to the sheet name whether it is global sheet or local sheet this is local sheet so i have to write dt local sheet dt local sheet and first bracket end I will be giving the equal sign so this I have referred this cell now this cells value has to come from where from this uh, from this this cell so I have to write here record set dot fills and I will be giving J value here now this value this value will be entered in this field so from the record set object value will be entered to the data table now i run it and see what happens and um, before that is this is for when this for loop uh, ends before going to this uh, for loop the first for loop the record set has to move from from here to here so this should select this row record set dot move next move next okay i explain again uh, for the this current for loop uh, when the iteration one this value one it selects the first row and do all those things when it comes out from this uh, in inner for loop it will this line will move to the second row it moves to the second row so when it comes um, when the 37 executes it select the second row and then it goes to the for loop again the i loop value is one and um, it will say this line will select this row actually this this row and this row it selected this row and um, the loop goes to here I value is 2 in the second iteration, 2 value is here. When the 2 value is here, it select this row and then goes to this, this loop. And this loop will add these 3 values here. Now I run it and see what happens. now see if all the data shows here see all the data are showing up here in the runtime data table 
random data tables uh, sheet name is action one uh, in this sheet this data showed up so data showed up here during runtime that i can see in the test uh, result window it's called hp iran results viewer so here i can see so this is what i have showed here hands on um, to move data from uh, record set object to the runtime variable and out of there are three entities here one is uh, database which is microsoft access data database which is visible i can see here i can see here there is another one that is a record set object which is invisible we cannot see record set object we cannot see but i have uh, created this based on the imagination now and the third is the data table. Data table also we have a visual. Though it is a design time data table, but we do have visual. We can see how the design time data, how the data table looks like. And the value we can see in the result. Value we can see in the result. Here, that this data has been uh, stored in the runtime data table uh, in the action one sheet data table name is uh, runtime data table and the sheet name is action one this is where the data was stored during runtime so that is what I have showed uh, hands on so I before I close out I show the entire code entire code so code starts from here and ends here thank you guys for watching